It's nice and early down here at Clarence Pier, and as you can see, I'm all harnessed up as we are going for a walk. Now, much like when we did the Swarm one, nothing's different at these smaller places. Um, everything's padlocked off, so the ride is off, so they know the ride is off. We've got the harness, and it's time. It's time to head out into the ride area. Right, so we have clip, and of course we're on. And then we unclip, bring the next one out. Clip it in before removing this one. You can see I've not done this before on this. But the views though. Right, and then we are fully clipped at the top. Oh, I actually didn't really... Don't really realise yeah, how far it is up mm. when you get up here. So yeah, it is early. They do start at 7 o'clock for an 11 o'clock opening. Just to kind of give you a scope on it. When we all have a go at the big parks for not having their major roller coasters open. You know, the smaller parks are still opening four hours early to get rides up and running, tested and ready for the day. And this has already gone round today, actually. I saw it go round as I was walking in. And look at this, look at these views. Standing at the top of the lift hill, you can see, and it's very much actually, we, we did Cobra at Portons Park, which was really, really fascinating to watch. Anyone that saw that will know my geekiness on that. Now actually, this is very similar as well, the way it times the trains as they go round, so you can see how long it takes the train to go around the track, uh, whether it gets quicker, whether or not it might be potentially a problem, obviously on the timing. So we've got six sensors on the lift hill. The lift hill is at the first block. So once you're at the station, there's nothing sort of there, there's nothing at the bottom. Um, this is the first block break, and it will time between them, and then this one will have a timer set to the top of the lift hill here. Now, the next block break is actually only there, so it's a very, very short one to the block break there. There is five cars for this ride, so if you were dispatching really, really quick and wanted to, um, you could have a couple sort of going around here at the same time practical-wise. Um, it's unnecessary, to be honest, and it's not something you would need to do. You then go around to the next block break, and the block breaks are generally, you can kind of tell where they are from obviously the emergency exits on them. Um, and then round to these ones, there's also one on the top of there with trim brakes here. Anyone that's been on this ride will know uh, the trim brakes used to slow down the train before entering the final one. But yeah, it's just fascinating how it's all sort of timed and how the computer knows. We've got six here, you've got three in quite close proximity, obviously as the train engages the chain and then as it comes up, up to the final one up here. So as we look out uh, of the cars, obviously down here, they're not on the track at the moment. So we, we, it says it's about an hour and a half to check the coaster in the morning. So again, when we're sort of talking about the big coasters, everyone's on about Hyperion and things opening late and what have you, just take it into scale account, this one, taking an hour and a half to set up in the mornings. Now as the cars come round the track, again, anyone that saw our Cobra one, that's the one we seem to get the most information on, it works the same way. So the cars will go around the track and the computer will set itself up to kind of know exactly how many cars are on the track. You don't go, I've got three cars. The computer kind of needs to work that out for itself, to be honest with you, so there's no mistake. Block brakes uh, have got three sensors. So it's got an entry sensor, it's got a sensor over the brake, and it's got an exit sensor as well, so it knows when to shut and open the brake, which is great. And this is actually set up, uh, which is a new requirement, that two block brakes stay free. So as it goes through that one, a train won't dispatch off the top of the lift hill until the next one is clear. Again, all set up by the computer, can't be overridden. You know, when you talk about safety aspects on these coasters, it's, it, it's amazing, really, when you think about it. Uh, the amount of laps that these do, as we said, the Cobra cars have done 110,000 miles. You know, they've, they've gone around the track quite a bit. Nothing, nothing gone wrong. And this works exactly the same way. This is a Visa model. And it's set up just as well as all the rest of them. Safe as you can imagine, honestly. Safe as you can imagine. Here's a nice close look at the lift hill. So, yeah, this one has double rollbacks just to be safe. The track itself has single rollbacks, obviously there's procedures in place if it does roll back. So it's checked once a month, everything on, on the coaster, the track is walked once a month. It takes about half a day for three people to do so. Obviously there's visual checks, but this is for bolts and you know everything else. But look at this look. It's not a view you get very often. We did see obviously the platforms which go up to the brake and I said that would be the way they, they get people off. I've never had to evacuate anyone off any of these brake platforms. Um, 
which is which is great but you'll you'll see these look like ladders here we'll actually get a closer look of those when we go back down but yeah quite an interesting fact uh, visas italian uh, the rules in italy are very very different actually i'll probably argue in the uk we probably have stricter rules than anything else than anywhere else i would argue uh, which is a good thing it really is a good thing but quite baffling the way that this is actually set up to operate out there so these platforms yeah these are optional they're not if you had the coaster in Italy, you wouldn't have these platforms because you manually release the brakes so anyone got stuck on it and get the train round, no problem. So these actually on here, these are ladders. And then you would climb across and then you would go up that ladder and then you would climb across and access the brake where again, there would be no platform. Obviously all harnessed up, but that is absolutely staggering. So when we looked at the one over there, that's three high. This one's only two high. You would go on and climb across and go up. I think it's much nicer having um much nicer having actual ladders. Now we have had a close up of this before, but while we're here, it seems rude not to. This is your motor, this is your engine. This is what's getting the chain up. Beautiful. As with all things, there's a lot of cabling going around. Easily labeled, this may not seem it, but white is electrical and blue is air. So obviously avoid standing on the blue ones, therefore air brakes and then electrical white ones, which flow around the ride. Now transfer track here, this is pushed across, this is all manual. So one of the cars is here at the moment that's having some brake work done. So the cars are actually checked on the first corner because there's good access to the first corner and then only taken off because this is quite a, as you can imagine, it's quite a mission to sort of um, pull it across unnecessarily to check them. It is then taken off here to do any work that's required. So one car here at the moment, three cars on track. As you can see that on there. Right, so the computer system comes on in the morning. There is um, various, obviously, keys which wouldn't normally be in here. Uh, green, ready to go. That's what the operators use. Yellow is for engineers. Now then, it is, it is complicated, but not complicated, if that kind of makes sense. I kind of understand it, but there's a lot going on here. Now, you've got brakes around the ride uh, and different areas around the ride. Obviously, the Zs are the block zones. Block zones themselves of everything being green at the moment is effectively because they're all closed. The ride's just been switched back on, although it is ready for um, operation. Everything's closed because it doesn't know how many cars are on the track yet. You would have alerts that come up here. Obviously, anything would go red. Uh, this one's open, this one's just here, which is why that one's like that. Now, I did ask the question, obviously, because I know people will ask, that these would manually release the brake. So when you press and hold it, the brake would open and it would close. And you'll see it goes yellow and close. And if you could do this one, you'll see it as he presses it. And you can hear these go in and you'll see that these brakes open down here. And then when they close again, you'll hear that. Obviously, if there is a car on track and the ride has broken down, you cannot override this no matter what. Doesn't even matter if there's not a car on the track. So we talked about the three sensors earlier. The idea for the middle sensor um, is the fact that obviously the train could be slightly past the back sensor, could be slightly before the front sensor, where it wouldn't be on the middle sensor. If the computer system thinks there is a train on the next block break, you will not be able to change that. Nothing you do will be able to change that. It will not open. It's not overridable. It's not overridable with any uh, engineer keys or anything like that. You simply will not be able to do it. And that is what keeps these, keeps these safe. Now the first car is going to be sent out so we can we can follow this around the track. I'll try and get as best I can on it. We've got a bit of sun glare. So these ones were the motors. So you can see that's now flashing green where it was red. And you can see that the block zone then obviously cuts in. Give you an idea. There goes the train. So the block won't clear, even though there's another zone. And you can see that block is now done. The trim brake has gone to yellow. And you'll hear it. We won't have to see it. And you'll see that the block then goes in train goes over that block zone is now occupied which is why it's red and that will not go green until it's through the next break which is there 
and then you'll hear the train which is going around there at the moment over the station above us. That then releases that brake and brings on the zone brake here. And then of course it hits the trim brakes. So the trim brakes are adjustable. It can vary sort of slightly as the day goes on. Sometimes they're quite harsh, sometimes they're not. They can be adjusted for the day. And then of course it'll roll into the station on the final block here trim brakes are on, motors engaged, so the motor's what's bringing it down the station. So these motors actually aren't here, they're not used, they're part of a different system. And obviously this will tell you as well where the train is at the same time. The motors are being used as the train comes back into the station and then goes red again. Here is the sequence, while I, looking at the brake on the ride. Um, so these are the three sequences, these are the three actual um, sensors on the ride and this little sequence here has to be enabled every single time it goes through a brake so it will know it's gone through it it's gone over the middle one and then gone over the one at the end if this isn't right or something varies on it the ride will shut down straight away so it should know what's going on i.e. if it misses one or it doesn't register the train or anything so brake one is let's brake one right brake one's up the top get those ones in as well so the yeah. middle sensor is activated because the brake's been open it's going in out and there we go and it closes and of course you can hear when it closes because the air pressure uh, when we said about the pipes that go out that's obviously coming from here as it goes through the next one this is brake number four this one's a little bit different because it needs to stop in brake four. And then off it goes to the final break down there. A genius system. You know, a lot of people talk about a lot of instances in the past, but honestly, they're so safe, it's absolutely unreal. The things behind the scenes that you don't get to see that keep you safe on these roller coasters. So of course, the third train will go around now and that will register that there is currently three trains on the track. I am gonna ask the question, hold on a moment. Now I had to ask a question because I didn't actually know. So these never change in terms of the order they're in. Uh, colour wise, although there are two blue ones, never change in order. So it's green, pink and yellow down there which is on. Now obviously when one's taken off the track for maintenance and things it knows that one's not there but they're sort of all uh, referenced, tagged. It is very, very clever that it knows. You can't mix them up. If you mix it up, the system would know and it wouldn't operate. It's as simple as that. And at the same time as well, if they need to bring a train onto the track, because we talk about as well transferring trains onto the track, you would need to get it, the train, in its right sequence of where it was supposed to be on the ride. You couldn't just plonk it on anywhere. And of course, you'd have to turn the ride off and then you'd have to run the sequence again of running all the trains. So the computer system knows exactly how many trains are on the track. And quite simply, if it doesn't know, it doesn't run. It's as simple as that. And if you confuse it, it doesn't run. It's as simple as that. It's not something you can trick or, you know, get around or make a mistake with. It just won't allow you to do it. So there we go. They've been round once now, so the computer knows that they're on the track. So if you send them round again, obviously the ID tag in the chassis will let them know that we've started the process again and that there's only three trains on the track. So there are two blue trains, one of them's there, one of them's been worked on, and they actually don't go next to each other, they go in between. So technically, we have train one, three, and five on the track for today's operation, and then train three and train, no, train two and train four currently aren't on the track. So yeah, this will now know, once these three have been round again, that there's just gonna be three trains on the track, and it will do additional checks as well. So it will do additional block rate checks, um, and, and kind of set the ride up for the day's operation. 
This is a view you don't get very often, to be fair. We'll quickly nab this view as it comes round. So it's quite good now there's more trains on the track. You can see sort of different zones are raided out and different motors are on the go. And it's all sort of, it's all sort of a buzz as more trains go around the track. And as that one goes around the top there, different zones are all lit. As the final one comes back around the station, there you go, that's how the Mad Mouse works. Huge thank you to the park, as always, and uh, they're about to open in about 20 minutes time, so I'm gonna leave them to their day.